I'm really excited about this conversation. So I'm just going to wait for more people to come. And I hope you are you are listening to me well. So I'm just waiting for people to come. It's saying that Instagram it's sharing with my followers that I am live. So let's just wait. Hang on. <laughs> We're telling more followers to join. Okay, great. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I hope you are you're listening okay I'm just waiting for more people to come I'm so excited about this conversation with Ale she's an amazing woman strong woman so let's see if I can add her So yeah, just a few seconds. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, hi. <laughs> so excited. Can't wait. So just waiting, waiting, waiting. We're going to talk about movement, about art, and about creativity, and how can you integrate that in a fitness lifestyle. Like it's not just fitness, also wellness lifestyle. So just waiting for a couple more people to join. And for Ale, that she's, she's the one that star. So please send me emoji if you can hear me or a high five, thumbs up. Oh, one more second. I'm going to invite in. I think it, this is, I think this will work. Oh, hi. <laughs> hello, hello, Anna. How are you? Good. Can you hear me well? Can yes. You see me? Can, yes, perfect. Can you hear me okay? And can you see me good? Yeah. Yes. I'm so happy. I'm so excited about this conversation. I have been waiting for this. So... <gasps> <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very, very excited too. Thank you for having me. And what an interesting topic you have prepared uh, for, for us and for the audience listening today. So I'm here. I'm all yours. Great. So thank you so much for all the people that are joining. If they want to send a high five, a thumbs up, something. So we know that they are uh, here. So yeah, I, I love the topic because, I mean, you're an artist and also you're a fitness enthusiast and a fitness girl. So one of the first questions that I want to ask is, uh, you have more than 10 years in the fitness industry as a personal trainer, as a heavy weight lifter. So it, it's such an exciting career. So I want to ask you, what, what were the challenges that you overcome and what did you do to be the woman, the strong woman that you are now? Because we know that being a strong woman, it's not just one day to the other. It, it, it's a process. So I want to know more about your process. Ah, oh, what a great question. Uh, very powerful, too. The, one of the first challenges uh, that, that, that I overcame was uh, my personal transformation. Because in 2010, I had been depressed for three years and I was working as a graphic artist for a company doing logos for marketing products. And I think I was in a situation where a lot of people can relate, where I was being overworked, underpaid, there was no growth opportunity and it felt like waking up every day 
It was the same thing over and over and over again until I felt death inside. I felt like a zombie. And on top of that, I had gained a lot of weight and I hated myself and I hated my body. And so it was a very dark place in my life. It was a complete breakdown. And um, so again, the first obstacle was to, to take on a challenge that was, I, cannot, I couldn't even imagine becoming a different person. And my first challenge was a friend of mine proposed to train me for a fitness competition. So that um, the first challenge was saying yes to that believing that I could do it, but I believe it because she said it was possible, not because I believe in myself, but because she says, yes, you can totally do it. Like it was the easiest thing in the world. So I said, yes. And that was a crazy journey. <laughs> I was, I did not enjoy it. I wasn't a nice person, <laughs> but I did it. And I completely transformed myself. I ended up losing about 40 pounds um, um, more than anything, I found myself again. I, I started to feel alive and feel things. And I started to want to do things with my life because before I didn't, I was a zombie. Like I said, I was almost dead inside. And, um, and at that moment where I found myself again, I realized that I wanted to become that person for other women out there that had lost themselves, that I could be their support. So that was the first and biggest challenge I overcame. And, and a continuous challenge I had throughout my, my career, especially in the first five years, where being a personal trainer was not necessarily a popular career. I was working at a Good Life Fitness uh, in Oakville, an all women's club. But repeatedly, there were women in there that saw how passionate, how powerful, how good of a, of a person I was in my service. And they always came and told me that I should look for a real career. <laughs> so, okay. You know, they, yes, they, that's, that's the comment that I got the first five years when I was a, a personal trainer. It's like, oh, you're super good. You're really good at what you do, but you should look into getting a real career. <laughs> what does the real career mean? <laughs> exactly. I didn't even know, right? And, and nowadays, well, fitness moves in this area, moves the world. Every, um, a lot of the people that I know, even if they're working full time uh, within a company, um, they, they also have that health and wellness uh, side business, right? And a lot of people in this area have made amazing careers out of, of the health and fitness and helping others and coaching others. So the world has changed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now you have a real career. <laughs> now I do, but I didn't even have to change it. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it's important is that you do it because you are passionate about it, because you truly believe and love what you are doing. And as yourself, you became, well, you, you went through this process. So you want to show other women to overcome that process too. So I think it's so important that you are you are doing this because of experience, not because one day you decided, oh, I want to be a personal trainer because it looks cool. No, it's because you truly cares and you truly want other me other people to change it as well. But let's let's change to animal flow. You're a master in it. What's animal flow? I, I didn't know that that was a thing. So what's about it? I just yeah, because you just discovered it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just saw your movements, and they're so beautiful because it's it's something like magical and arty, artsy too. So what what's about it? Yes. Yeah, so uh, much like you, I have recently uh, uh, people that are looking at my account and asking what is Animal Flow because they've only seen it for the first time. Animal Flow has been around for about 10 years, mm -hmm. but I discovered it in 2015 at a CanFit Pro conference. Now, Animal Flow is, uh, this is how I love to, to explain it. It is as if yoga and break dancing had gotten married and had a baby. The baby would look like animal flow. <laughs> so it is, a, um, it is a movement practice discipline. It is well established. So if, if you want more information, you can log into Animal Flow Official here on IG. And then you'll see, um, you know, the structure, the courses, the workshops, the instructors there. And what it is, it's, it's like, a, you know, 
you do planks. You've done planks in your workout because planks make you strong and they work your core and they also work stability in the joints. So imagine animal flow as being a form of planks in motion. So at its maximum expression, and yes, at the beginning we build it with different planks. We call it beast, we call it crab, we call it ape, but they are simply planks in different multi-dimensional positions. And once we apply movement and, and the concept of transitions and flows, um, it's what becomes animal flow, the maximum expression of the discipline. And, and I love it because for me, it's a form of, um, it's a workout. It's also a form of meditation. And it's also a, a way of creating art with my own body. So some days I, I walk with the intention of getting a kick-ass workout and I get a great sweat and all my muscles are burning and my core, I can't hold it anymore. And some others I use it to, to meditate in motion. And some others I put music and I'm creating art to the music. So it is, uh, you know, I guess it's, it's the core of our chat. How can, can movement, how can fitness also be meditation and art? And you can get everything you need as a human, you know? Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's my next question. How can, you, how can you be creative and how can you add this art perspective into movement and into fitness? So because most of the people, they just go to the gym, they do the workouts and that's it. And they don't even think what are they doing. But that's, I think that's also part of the meditation and being mindful that you are doing with your body, what you want. But what about the art? How, how do you interconnect both? Well... Like you said, it starts with the awareness of the body. So what I have observed in myself and with my clients over the past 10 years is that because we live in a world with a lot of stress, a lot of the demands that, that have us caught up in our minds, right? Like, oh, like, like the, the rat race, we call it, or, or stresses or concerns or worries with family. And we've had a couple of crazy years. So what happens is a person would start to become disconnected from their bodies. They do not want to feel the body because in the body there is pain. So you don't want to go there. You don't want to go to your neck because it hurts. You don't want to feel your hips because it hurts. Um, you don't. And if you go to the gym, you want to go there because you want the, the body, the meat suit to look a certain way. But we are in that moment, the person thinking of the body as, as, a, as an object. So it starts with the awareness of what is happening when you grab a weight and when you move it, it's not the weight moving you. It's not you moving the weight. It's something inside of you that creates a connection and a movement. So it starts with the mindfulness of, of feeling the body, the fibers stretch and squeeze as you move. And at that moment, it becomes, um, again, a, a, like a consciousness like a meditation exercise that comes before the art for me because the art it's the expression where I feel fully connected with my body as I am moving it and it can take uh, like in animal flow it's taken me various years to master the movements so that they look specifically like the discipline same like yoga right same same as if um, someone is learning how to squat or how to do a bent over row properly. They have to repeat it consciously over and over and over again until it's embedded in the body. And then the body knows how to do it. And then the mind, the mind can relax and start focusing on other things like the way you breathe, like on the music, and then starting to sink into those other, other feedback systems. But the easiest way I can recommend you and, and our listener here to do some art with the body, right? It's put your favorite song, close your eyes, and just let your body move. Because our bodies, our, our minds, our hearts know the truth. Most of the time, we're just blocking the truth, right? Because we're too worried about money and, and stress and the phone call and the person that made you upset. So... It's all about, you know, you practice opening, opening art, opening meditation, opening um, flow by not closing. Your favorite song will do the trick. <laughs> so try that today. Make sure you get some movement and some art. <laughs> I 
I just love that because I love dancing. Uh, I I do Zumba. I just love everything yes. about dance, and I don't know. It's it's just magical when you just listen to the music and it just like you say, you just close your eyes and you just move. You don't have to move a certain way. It's just yes, whatever feels right for you. And I think the most beautiful thing about dancing is that there's no specific way or wrong, right or wrong way to do it. It's mm -hmm. just movement and it, it doesn't matter. It's just getting it's the flow. <laughs> and you know, I've been teaching movement for 10 years. And one of the biggest thing I hear in the industry is you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. So the person thinks that they do not have control over their body. But the truth is that no one can know more about your body than yourself because you live inside of it. So yes, you can go to a personal trainer, you can go to a movement coach, much like myself, right? To learn how to move with a specific purpose. But as much as I know, I cannot know what you feel inside your body, right? So the answer is always out of you and you have to trust that. Yes, and, and that's why, you could, yes, music is such a great healing tool as well. It just allows. Have, yeah, <laughs> sorry, and you have to be mindful because it doesn't matter if, if you do it correctly or not, you have to be mindful of what you are doing because not all exercise is better for all people. So there are some things that won't work for you, even if, if you try harder every day it simply won't work because our bodies are different. So we need to listen to our bodies to understand what is good for us. Because Absolutely. If we see the picture and the pose is perfect, but maybe that, that pose is not for me because my body, it's not designed that way. So we need to understand that. And that's part of this self-care, self-love that we need to, to have within ourselves. So I'm yes. just loving it. <laughs> And I have the perfect example because this is the reason why I do animal flow and not yoga. For many years, everybody told me how good yoga was for meditation, for relaxing, for strengthening. And I, I always chose to believe them, my friends, right? And I would go and take a yoga class and they were in the pose, just like with a big smile on their face. <laughs> and they finished the class and they're like, oh my God, I love it. And the whole time I was feeling pain, like something inside my body what did not like it and animal flow is very similar to yoga with some key differences but that difference make the big difference in the world for me so it's it's a perfect example to what you just said yeah and i want to say all women outside that they have to try they have to try everything that is yeah. available because you have to find what it, it puts for you but also don't Don't be hard, so hard on yourself. If one day don't work, try it another day. Maybe the second day will work because again, our bodies are different and we can have the perfect workout today and tomorrow we can do the exactly the same workout and feel like trash. So it, it's all about starting to live with these waves that it's life. So and that's amazing. <laughs> Oh, yes. I know here in your audience, there's various women looking to be inspired or looking to start their own fitness journey, their own fitness routine. Just like what you said, the best advice I can give is to try different things. One day, um, try a choreography class on YouTube. Another day, try Zumba class with Anna. Another day, try some stretches with Alex. I have some free stretches on my YouTube. And then you have to, to collect those disciplines that make you feel really good because you're going to continue doing them and you're going to notice progress and wellness. If you, you, you go to the gym and do weights because that's what you've been told is the best way to do it, but you hate it, you're not going to do it. It's not going to be good for you. And you might even get hurt, right? Because your body or your mind is resisting the process. So yes, best advice, try various things and find the ones that make you feel joyful and happy and connected to your body not like you don't want to be inside your body right <laughs> i love this and one other thing is what would you say to the women out there that for example you talk about your process that you didn't like it that you were hating it but you were doing it because you already say yes but what's that 
key motivator or what's that key mantra that you have to tell yourself to continue doing stuff? You want to know what? Uh -huh. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you, meanwhile, you start to love in the process. What do you do to, to continue? Okay, do you want to know my personal mantra or the one I tell my clients or both? <laughs> <laughs> so, the one I tell my clients is there are always two versions of yourself. So, if you were to look into the future, there is your happiest, most joyful, best possible version of you that is remembering you. So this person is, exists in the future, in a potential future. And there is also the complete opposite of that. And at the moment where you're standing, all you need to do is take one step forward in the direction you want to go. Because if you don't take it there, that step is going to go in many other possible directions. So The only thing you need to do today is one step forward. And both, you know, the best possible version of you in the future or the best or the worst possible version of you in the future are there to show you um, um, contrast, much like my painting. Both serve a purpose. The dark colors, the negative emotions are there to help you redirect your attention and the positive ones are there to help you feed into the good feelings of becoming your best possible self. So contrast, it's all about contrast and it's all about the only one step you need to do today. So that's what I tell my clients. For me, it's a little more <laughs> dark, but I always look at my life in light of death. So thinking that I am a creature, that I, a, a being, I don't know where I came from, but I exist in this parenthesis of time between two infinities. There is an infinite amount of time that came before me. And then I'm here for like 80 years, 100, I don't know, 40 more, I don't know. But after I am gone, there's also another infinity that is going to continue. So this moment in time, it's either the biggest mistake of an infinite universe or it is the biggest miracle, right? And it's a very short period of time. So if I was to die tomorrow, I want to be able to tell a good story to whoever receives me on the other side. And so that's why I say, this is mine. <laughs> it's a little dark, <laughs> but looking at my life in light of how small and how miraculous it is that I am here makes me want to live powerfully every single day. And I wasn't this person before. This is who I've become. This is who I am now. But Alex, 10 years ago, would have told you a different story. So, yes, I look at the power of my life in light of my mortality. Yeah. I, I just love that. It's, it's so powerful and so, like you say, it's a miracle. And also get me thinking, like, Yeah, there's a universe out there and we're just a tiny, 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 tiny little pin in the middle of this big universe. But also we are part of that universe. So we need to behave ourselves like we are being grateful for the universe because it's, it's I mean, I'm, I want to touch the grateful part because I think it's so important to be grateful what we are doing now and what we are, what we have outside for us, like the nature, like the food that we eat, like our friends. So we need to be grateful for all those things that they are coming to us. And I think the best, best that we can do is just treat our others and treat ourselves and treat nature with respect and admiration. So that, that's why I think that that message is so powerful. And I'm so grateful that you are sharing this with us and you are being open to share it. So it's, I think more people need to, to listen to this. <laughs> Yes, I know they will. I know they will. And, and you want to know another amazing miracle? Not just the fact that you are here and I'm here, but that we're here together. Like out of the, all the possibilities in history to exist, you, me, right here, right now. That always makes me so grateful for every single person that I, that I speak to, that messages me on Instagram. I always try to reply to all the messages because it's just, to me, it's a miracle that we have 
um, connected in this moment in time. It's like, it gives me goosebumps. It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for it because, I mean, people doesn't know, but we are from the same country and we, we were almost neighbors. <laughs> that too. And we meet until now, so it's... <laughs> Absolutely. There, and there is a reason, right? Why now? Why not before? <laughs> Why not in Mexico, like uh, 30 years ago, right? you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Okay, we have five more minutes. Do you want to tell something like your final words to, to the audience about empowerment, about art, about movement, and about how to become the best version of ourselves? Yes, absolutely. So... Living in, my last words, living in this um, world with such an incredible amount of feedback, feedback, right? From online feedback, from the outside world, from job, from family. Take, if you can only take one minute a day to close your eyes and put your hands on your chest and, and feel that energy that it's propelling your life, the energy that is the reason you are here and your heart is beating even just one minute, that's a great start. That's a great start to, to self-nurture, to acknowledge your life and, and that you have a purpose here and the rest will come to you. So start with that. And, um, you know, we touched base on, on various different concepts and, and the reason, um, Oh, I want to bring this into the awareness. Oh, that's yeah. true. Your uh, book, yes. My right. book, Energy in Motion, How to Unleash Your Mind and Take Action Now. I wrote it with the purpose of, of allowing anyone that reads it their own personal journey. So I, with this book, I do not intend my reader, I do not want to tell them what to do. I simply want to narrate the story of some of the miracles that I've discovered about the mind, how the mind works, the conscious mind versus the unconscious mind, how interconnected we all are. More importantly, the power of emotions, because for example, we're taught, we're taught to not talk and ignore negative emotions, mm -hmm. or that if you're feeling something negative like grief, rage, anger, hurt, it's bad. And you shouldn't feel those things or you should try to fix it as quickly as possible. But there's a lot of power in those emotions. And so in this book, you're going to find some answers. So again, if you've been struggling with those emotions over the past year, I hope, and I, and I wrote it with that intention that you're going to find some answers here to regain your personal power and start doing just small actions Small, really small steps. That next step that I, that I talked about, I tell my clients, is what is the step you need to do today? Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about 10 years from now. If you can, do it, but you don't need to. So again, as a resource. And, and you'll have an insight to my brain. And if, if you check out my Instagram, you'll see that, um, you know, they call me a coach of many things. And this yes and no. But what I do is I work for my client. I work for my one client. I do one-on-one -on -one consulting. Sometimes I do group projects. So you and I, Anna, might work in something together in the future. And, and my, my, my passion is to bring this experience of the power of being alive to my clients, to my audience. So, yeah, the, the website is energyinmotionbook.com. It's also on my, on my Instagram And um, last words for today, put your favorite song today and sing and dance or cry. Sometimes crying is really good and needed too. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And to thank you, Anna, for inviting me here and, and, you know, being able to speak to you and to your audience. And I hope this can be inspiring for them as well. Yes, for sure. I mean, you truly inspire me and I admire you and I see you're a strong woman and I'm so happy that we meet. So yeah, for sure. This will be on my Instagram and then we can share it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank oh, you it's my for listening. Pleasure. And you will be getting one of my, well, you'll be getting my book soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Thank you.